What's up guys, Grizzly Wizard here, coming back for another reaction to 1000 Suns, science fiction anthology that has taken me by storm. Really enjoying this so far, actually. We are on episode 3, which is called Exodus. This was written and directed by Tyson Wade Johnston, cinematography by McGregor. And the synopsis reads, Those with means flee a climate-ravaged Earth, seeking refuge in the stars. Those without are left behind, holding on to hope. Sounds pretty bleak. Uh, the director quote says, With Exodus, I wanted to tell a story of a family trapped in a vicious generational cycle. Real people with simple aspirations, pinned down by the overwhelming forces of class and capitalism. Wow, okay. Well, based on this, it, I feel like this one's going to have quite a loaded commentary, as opposed to the first two, which seem to be more uh, lofty sci-fi concepts. As I said in the previous reaction, one of the cool things about this anthology series is that all of the shorts that are available are out for free on YouTube. So follow the link in the description of the video and watch the original shorts before you watch this reaction. It'll enhance your experience. Cool. Well, from the description, seems like this one might be a little heavy. Uh, without further ado, A Thousand Suns, Episode 3, Exodus. Yeah, the intro is classy. Exodus. Good band. It can't be much longer now. 2041. Okay. Remaining U.S. population, 166 million. Everyone's emigrating off-world because the climate's fucked. Starting to let herself go. We don't talk about it. I like the symmetry of talking about the damaging the biosphere, damaging our own bodies as she stands there with like a cigarette, damaging her own body. Vanguard ILS transportation base, Southern California. Oh, cool. Oh, so those must be the the off-world ships fleeing this planet. Damn, and you know that immigration, off-world immigration, is only going to be available to, like, the upper crust. It's going to be super expensive. Everyone else is, like, just left here. Derelict humans on a derelict planet. Can't even go outside without that apparatus, I bet. I'm trying to keep my head straight. I have a better mindset about things. That's a great shot. Like, I can do this. I can do this. I just want to be happy. I want my mom to be happy. I wish we could just pack up our shit and run away. You can't afford it. Oh, fuck. Man, this is heavy. And he knows he won't be able to take her with him if he is able to escape. Can't be much longer now. It can't be much longer now. Is it just the climates fucked the planet, or are they actually like waiting on like an extinction event longer. about to happen? That's a cool shot. Look at that. It can't be much longer now. It can't be much longer now. It's been years. It can't be much longer now. Listen to his voice. Oh, man. Just another generation of this. Man, that really hit me. And when his mom was a young girl, she was doing the same thing, staring at her parents. 2091. 
God. 83 million. It's dropping. This one gave me a chill, actually. Just a cold feeling in my stomach. It can't be much longer now. <sighs> Jesus. Jesus, that one was heavy, man. Yeah, the, the evils of capitalism that, like, we would. We would do that. We would fucking do that, too. We would we'd completely screw the planet. The climate is irreversible. There's no hope. There's no sustainable life projected in the future for the planet. So what do we do? We charge people to leave. Immigration, the applications, you know those processing fees are more than any of these low-income families were able to handle. And so just generations are going by in this, just in this mire. Huh. This one's depressing because this one I feel like hits the closest to a possible future that we may experience. You know, just with the way things are headed right now. And I think, I think that is an important role that science fiction plays in the arts as well, is trying to look towards the future and, and speculate and postulate and imagine what could it be like and what can we do to avoid the worst of those, you know? Because I would hate to live in a future like this. I would hate that. But you know what? It's on the table. I would say this is more... This is, a, this is an, an eventuality that's more on the table than the first short, you know? The guy terraforming ancient distant worlds. I feel like those two stories could even be connected, but... This is something that fills me with a level of existential dread that, that the Cthulhu monster coming out of the ice really wasn't, not in the same category, you know. Yeah, this one was moving. This one was powerful. And uh, I'll be thinking about this one for the rest of the day. I can already tell. Huh, yeah, that was heavy. Thanks for watching it with me, everybody. I hope you enjoyed my reaction to episode three of A Thousand Suns. This anthology series is kicking my ass at this point. I, I'm really enjoying it. I'm here for the concept. I think that the, just the production design it has been impeccable in these. They're just so good to look at, you know? And then delving into the actual content of these stories, like, it gets pretty heavy. It gets... They're going places. They're actually going to deep places and, and, and making commentaries that I think are useful in today's, in today's world. Yeah, I was thoroughly impressed by this. Really enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Um, check out the rest of the channel for my content reactions and reviews. I will be reacting to every episode of this. The reactions come out once a week right here on the channel, so stay tuned for episode four. Um, thanks again, and I'll catch you in the next one.